latched sequencing logic. Sequencing is the bread for most PLCs. Originally PLCs replaced relay logic and relay logic usually executed in sequence. A little earlier than that and along with relays they had drum sequencers and drum sequencers were indexed by a motor and each step was represented by the presence or absence of pins or ramps in the drum, the actual cylinder that rotated. And as the cylinder rotated, the ramps or the pins would actuate switches to turn on and off outputs in sequence. And there were actually two sequencer drums, an input sequencer drum and an output sequencer drum. I searched high and low on the internet and could not find a picture of one anywhere. In the um, advanced two manual I did include a photo of something close that they still sell to put on machines that they can sequence outputs with. So we're going to start with latch sequencing logic before we get into the sequencer instructions. This represents the logic that we had you uh, type in and then download and go online with early in this group of labs. Let's talk about this a minute. You've got five rungs, rungs 0 through 4, and this is a output sequencer. So we are actually looking at a set of bits. In the first rung we're looking at B3 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 2 which are the bits that represent the steps complete. We're also looking at a photo eye, a limit switch, and a prox. So when this rung is true, it will turn on the output zero, which is okay to start sequence. If you look in rung one, okay to start sequence is preceded by start sequence. So we have an input zero push button or push button zero that's wired up to input 5 is anded with OK to start sequence. That is anded with the exact same three conditions that were found in rung 0 for photo I 0, limit switch 1, and prox 2. Start sequence push button and OK to start sequence output indicators, indicator 0, are probably a lit push button. So when the first rung is true, it illuminates a lamp saying it's okay to start a sequence and that is a lit push button. So when you see the light turn on, it is the push button that you would push to start the sequence. That would be the logical way to do it. Now let's demonstrate this logic. The first three permissives, sequence is reset meaning that you are no longer in the sequence. The sequence has completed and been reset because you are not step 0 complete, not step 1 complete, not step 2 complete. So when the sequence is reset and all the inputs are at the home position, so we're representing the not photo I0, not limit switch 1, and not prox 2 as all inputs at the home position for this machine, which that rung is true, so it turns on the indicator, OK to start sequence. And notice, as we go through this, each rung, its output condition, in this case, OK to start sequence, will be represented as a permissive in the next step. You could have called this step zero if you wanted to. I chose not to. I called it OK to start sequence. Once the sequence is OK to start, then if you push push button 0 and you're still in the home position it says step 0 is complete. Notice when step 0 went complete B30 slash 0 that any place that it was examined off as in rung 0 step 0 complete is now false. So rung 0 is now false and you notice that OK to start sequence that bit has now been set to zero, so rung one is also false. However, we have latched in the condition 
step zero complete because it was complete. Now the conditions that made it complete are no longer true. That's why we need to latch it. You'll see later on in another type of sequencing logic that we use another approach to seal in that it was complete. Okay, so step zero is complete. If you look at rung two, everything is true with exception of the photo eye. We're waiting for the photo eye to be true. Once photo eye zero is true, then step one is complete. And if you look in rung three, step one is complete. Photo I zero, uh, that condition is true because, well, I'm sorry. You see that photo I zero went false. The true if off went false when the true if on in rung two became true. So it latched up B301. We look at rung three, step one complete. However, we're waiting for the rest of the bits, input 00, zero input 01, and input 0t to true to be true before step two is complete. So at this point the machine is moving because what we don't show you here is that when step zero was complete that would have caused some outputs to go high or low, on or off, that would have caused some machine motion to affect the inputs in rung two. And then when step one was, one was complete, that would be used to turn some outputs on or off, which would cause some machine motion to cause the conditions in rung three to be true and then step two would be complete and at that point you finish the sequence so we could add more logic in other words we could have a step three so we would insert a rung between rungs three and four that would be triggered by step two complete and some other permissives and once those permissives were true then we would latch a bit step three complete now if we had step zero one two and three then in rung four, we would have to branch around step two complete with an unlatch for step three complete. So when push button one is pushed, that unlatches B3001 zero, 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 and zero, 02, and then we go back to rung zero. The first three would now be true because you've unlatched those, and we would be waiting on photo I zero and limit switch one to change states so it would be okay to start the sequence. Uh, you did all this in the lab so this should be clear. Okay, while you're processing this logic, you're executing it by flipping switches, you have six inputs on your demo and four outputs. And uh, we're only making use of several of the inputs here, input zero, one, and two. And then we're using input four for the reset push button. So with the logic reset, press the start sequence push button, switch, limit switch one to the on position. Is rung number one still true? No is the bit B300 still in the on state? Yes. Why? The OTL or the output latch instruction does not have a false execution. The intent is to latch it on. If you remember from the basics manual when you did your projects, an OTE such as the output instruction and rung zero here, okay to start sequence, that is an OTE, output energize. It has a true and a false execution. If the rung is true, it sets that memory location to 1. If the rung is false, it sets that memory location to 0. So an OTE, an output instruction, has a true and a false execution. The latch and the unlatch instructions each only have a true execution. When the rung goes false, they don't do anything. They're silent. So if the last thing that that memory location, B300, if the last thing that it heard was, you're on, 
from the latch instruction run goes false it's still on and remember that the output instructions shown here the highlight indicates the on or off status not the true or false whereas everything else in these rungs all the permissives they actually are highlighted based on true or false this is also something you would learn from the first manual okay is rung number two true looking at it well I see two instructions that aren't so no is rung number three true nope is the bit pattern for just the inputs in rung number three that would be photo I zero let me switch one and prox number two is the bit pattern for just the inputs in rung number three true yes what is lacking for rung number three to be true memory location tagged B301 to be in the on state meaning the step one is complete well step one is not complete because in rung true photo I zero and limit switch one have not changed state yet what is lacking from rung number two to be true which I just stated memory locations tagged input zero zero need to be on and input zero one need to be off switch limit switch one to the off position and photo I zero to the on position in other words satisfy the conditions for rung number two to go true how would you modify the logic to eliminate the need for the reset sequence push button in other words input four you could relocate the OTU instructions the output unlatch instructions into rung number three to be executed with the completion of step number two in other words you could take and branch around the latch instruction for step two complete you could branch around three times with unlatch B30, unlatch B31, and unlatch B32. And we had you modify your logic to eliminate the reset push button. Or we, we ask you to do it your way, or you can try what's shown here, which is basically what I described. You branched around step to complete latch instruction and then you extended branch down twice so you have three unlatch instructions so when step one is complete and the inputs photo I zero limit switch one and proximity switch two when they're in the correct states to make this rung true step two is complete and then it unlatches the steps well you're looking at this and you're saying oh well this is done left to right top to bottom so the first thing I did was I latched up B302 then I unlatched B300 and B301 then I turned around and unlatched B302 that I just latched a microsecond before so that begs the question do you still need the step to complete bit B302 to make the logic work uh, you know the answer the answer is no so then we had you modify your logic to eliminate step to complete bit or try the logic in the next illustration the reason that we say modify your logic or try the logic in the next illustration is because at this point in the lab manual we're, we're offering you to go ahead and do it your own way as long as it works we're cool with it another variation that we had you um, execute for yourself was let's say we wanted the logic to cycle continuously without the need to press a push button to start each cycle now some machines you need to push a start button for each part that it assembles or for each little chunk of process that it completes others once you hit the start button you want it to just sit there and keep cranking through the sequence part after part process after process so here we eliminated the uh, push button in the second rung so as soon as we're okay to start sequence and photo I zero limit switch one and proximity switch two are in the correct state then step zero is complete and the machine cycles through when step one is complete 
and the inputs are in the correct state then it latches step two complete and clears all of them and again you could eliminate step two complete either way rung zero goes true again output zero goes on rung one is true and it just keeps right on cycling and yet another consideration is what happens if the sequence gets hung up and we just want to reset and start from scratch in other words start from the beginning of the process keep in mind that we don't show any actual outputs here in a machine we just show output zero as an indicator saying okay to start sequence and then step zero complete step one complete and step two complete those are internal bits those aren't outputs we would have more logic that used uh, B3001 and maybe even step two if we hadn't eliminated it um, to energize outputs and then those outputs move cylinders and the cylinders move parts in the machine that cause photo I0, limit switch one, and proximity switch two to sense or not sense position. And that's what actually drives the sequence. So we had you add a reset sequence push button back into the logic without undoing what we did in the previous lab and you can see that if the machine gets hung up and let's say it's hung up like it is right now it shows step zero complete but it's waiting for photo I zero to turn on or to go to the on state and let's say it hung up there if you press input four that's going to clear step zero step one and step two wherever it's hung up and wait for the um, inputs photo I zero, limit switch one, and proximity switch two to be back in the home state, which they are, and you go right back to OK to start sequence. Now I do see a, um, we, we'll call it a typo if you want, or an unnecessary condition in rung one, you see that we have OK to start sequence in there twice. Well, uh, that's not going to hurt anything, OK? Uh, you wouldn't do that in a real world application. You would delete one of those two. Um, but actually this is a good thing and I guess I'll just say I left it in there on purpose so you could see that having the same thing in there twice doesn't hurt anything it doesn't need to do it twice but both of those being identical they're both going to be true they're either going to both be true or both be false but in reality you delete one I just accidentally left it in there a further consideration is that if we reset then we have to restart so uh, and we need more control over this process so I had you add a start sequence push button back in the logic without undoing what we just did in the previous lab of sequence cycling without pressing the start sequence push button for each cycle so in other words we added the start sequence back in but it's not required for every single cycle just to start it once you've stopped or reset. Now one thing I did here is rung zero I have start sequence push button uh, turning on cycle running and I used seal in logic to hold the rung true and then if you push the reset sequence push button push button one the rung goes false and it drops out the OTE to hold true to form you could use input 5 and an OTL a latch instruction for output 1 and that's all and then you would use input 4 the reset sequence push button when that gets pushed to unlatch output 1 and that would have kept it all in latched form however seal in logic which I have for rung 0 is superior to latched logic in the sense that all everything that turns that bit on output one in the first rung rung zero everything that turns the bit on or turns it off is all right there in one rung when you use latch and unlatch you have to go to different rungs to see what turns the bit on and what turns it off so sealing logic is harder to write but it's a little easier to read because everything that turns the bit on or off is all in one rung.
okay we we had you try that out and then we had you add a stop cycle push button into the logic okay so reset sequence is for when the machine gets hung up and you just want to clear but stop cycle is a different story so we had you try your own or dupli duplicate the edit shown in the manual here we made a couple modifications we put the step to complete bit back into the logic and because the steps are sequential it is not necessary to have all three XIO in the OK to start sequence or true if off for all of the step 0, 1, and 2 in OK to start sequencing logic because step 2 can't be complete unless steps 1 complete and step 1 can't be complete unless step 0 is complete. So we're we're trimming down the logic a little bit here um, to make the logic a little bit more compact, a little bit more trim. Another reason for having a bit for the last step is for when the time comes when it's not the last step. So if we have step 2 complete in here and we want to add step 3, well step 2 complete is already there to be used if you want to add another step. And as a matter of fact, that's what we had you do next. Uh, now that you understand this step-to-step -step or rung-to-rung -rung sequencing, we had you add another step into the sequence at the end or step 3, which um, we now have step 3 complete, and we use step 3 complete to reset steps 0, 1, 2, and 3 latch bits. Okay, then we had you take and scramble the rungs around. Also, we had you eliminate the unlatch instructions and use a clear instruction. In an earlier lab or in a lecture, I've mentioned that if you pick carefully the bits that you're going to latch, use them all from one word or a sequence of words, you can use one instruction, clear or fill file, to unlatch all the bits with one instruction as you can see here. Also notice that the rungs are now in a different order. Does the sequence execute any different than before you shifted the order of the rungs? No. And it shouldn't. Now there are ways of writing logic called scan dependent logic that it does matter if you move the order of the rungs around. In this case it doesn't. However, what would be a good reason for putting these in the order of the first rung is OK to start sequence, the second rung is step 0 complete, then step 1 complete, step 2 complete, step 3 complete, and then the clearing or resetting. Well, readability. If you're an engineer or technician or electrician who's writing code, well you know the process and you know what you want to happen and it works and you walk away and you're happy. However, no matter who you are, if you've never seen this logic before or you're even the person who wrote the code a year later you may look at it and go wow what's this what kind of an idiot put this in a weird order so it's always good to take some responsibilities the author of the code to write it in a way that makes it easy and logical to follow